Somebody asked me what's new in ulnar collateral ligament surgery. Go ahead, don't be shy. Oh, I heard somebody ask me, what's new in ulnar collateral ligament surgery? I'm going to tell you what's new. It's this thing about the augmentation of a repair or this internal brace. A repair is an interesting concept. This is that article I mentioned before. This is the article on Tommy John surgery. John's the lead author with Frank Job. 70 patients, 14 of them were treated with repair, not a reconstruction. And some of them did do quite well. The more elite players did not do so well. So reconstruction really became what we thought of as the best operation. There are a few reports. Buddy Savoie has 60 patients with a repair of the MCL or UCL for younger patients. Maybe those patients we talked about that may be good for non-operative treatment. And he had very good results using suture anchors in a very select group. I'm going to show you a case example just to jump right into it. But the indications for repair is you need some quality of the ligament. You're asking this ligament to heal, so not that bad ligament we showed before. Sometimes the avulsion is even better than a broad intrasubstance tear. And what's nice about repair is we're not asking tissue from some other place in the body or allograft to convert into a ligament. We're asking ligament to heal. That may be a faster process than asking other ligament to transform into a ligament, so it has this advantage of a faster recovery. That affects seasonal timing. If a player says, I have six months to be ready for my next season, and if I can't be ready, I'm not gonna play high school uh, baseball anymore, or if their career is uncertain. So let's take an example of a 16-year-old high school pitcher, wants to play in college, season uh, timing is at in play, injury happens in May, he's got a positive exam, he's got this type of ligament, it's thick, it looks like it has chronic changes, it's a distal injury, bad prognosis from what we talked about before with simple non-operative treatment. So let's consider this option of a repair and I'm going to show you what this looks like. This operation I wanted to share with you because it's going to get a lot of enthusiasm. Whenever you hear shorter recovery time, people want to have shorter recovery time for this operation. So here's the approach. We um, incise the skin. Now we're doing this flexor mass split. This is an internervous plane. We identify the ligament. The ligament actually right now doesn't look that bad. Put some uh, dots on it. We're going incise the ligament because this happens to be a undersurface tear. So if you just looked at it on the superficial side, you wouldn't see it. But over here, this thing is lifting off the bone. That's where the uh, injury is. We're going to stimulate this to heal. We're going to get the soft tissue off the bone. And then we're going to do this single point of fixation for a repair of that distal attachment. And we're also going to put a brace in. So we drill a hole. We're going to tap the hole and we're going to put in a suture anchor. The suture anchor happens to have this collagen coated high tensile tape. Collagen coated so it's favorable to the biologic environment. Meaning it's going to bond and heal with the ligament. We get the anchor in. In addition to this tape, looks like a shoelace, we have these sutures. We're going to use the sutures to repair the ligament. Suture through the part that's torn. You can see there's some gapping at the ulnar humeral joint. Before we tie these sutures, we're going to reduce the joint. So we pass the sutures right through that area of the ligament that's detached. Ulnar nerve is hanging out over here. Nice part about this, we don't have a lot of ulnar nerve concern, even though it's very close in proximity because of this single point fixation. Don't have to make wide tunnels. Elbows reduced now, and we'll tie the repair sutures. Now we made a split in the ligament, and you can see the ligament here. It looks pretty healthy. It's a little thick compared to a, a non-thrower. And so we're going to set up some stitching to do some side-to-side -side repair from the split that we made. 
And now we're going to decide a critical point on the epicondyle on where this special tape should go. This tape is going to shield the stress on that ligament repair. It's going to protect it. When we flex and extend the elbow, it'll tell us the exact location of where it will be isometric, meaning the tape won't get loose or get tight when you flex and extend the elbow. So we fixed that, we found that isometric point, the exact location. Before we put that tape in, we will tie the sutures for the repair of the native ligament. And now we're going to take that tape and put it in this specialized implant that will allow us to put the tape into the tunnel. When it's partially in, we'll check if it's too tight, too loose. We'll check flexion and extension. If we don't like it, we'll loosen the tape. If it's too tight, if it's too loose, we'll tighten it. And once we like it, we'll commit to it. We'll put in that screw. We'll cut that uh, excess tape. And that last repair stitch we did not tie yet facilitates putting that screw in better. And then as we heard from the anatomy, the ligament insertion distally is broad and lengthy. So we have an opportunity to even put in an extra suture on this end where it's still you see a little bit of split there. And we flex and extend and we see that we have full motion. And now we have a repair that has this special protection. So the summary is high strength tape biologic with collagen coating, small anchors, the repair is direct to bone so that we don't have to wait for that long time of healing that happens when you use a reconstruction where you want graft to convert to ligament. So if we include all of the work, including Job's original group, there are less than 100 patients that have reports available to us to examine in the literature with all of the elbow surgery that's happened, with thousands of UCL reconstructions that have been reported. So Jeff Dugas has pioneered this. He developed it. He reported at a meeting of the Sports Medicine Society, 22 patients, a lot of different tear types, more distal than proximals. And these patients at six months are back to throwing, different than our Tommy Johns that take at least a year. So thank you very much.